Howdy folks, today we're gazing into the crystal ball to figure out what the future holds for photography with one of the greatest names in the business, right after this. Welcome to Camera Shake, where we bring you the insider scoop on all things photography and videography, giving you a unique opportunity to stay ahead of the curve. We spent literally hundreds of hours interviewing some of the most renowned photographers of our time, giving you access to knowledge and expertise that's not available anywhere else. As always, I'm your host, Kirsten Nuts, and if you, well, if you're like me and you enjoy free podcasts and YouTube content, then you can become a supporter of the show by buying us a coffee over on buymeacoffee.com forward slash camera shake to help us create more exciting episodes for you. But of course, you are more than welcome to say no, no hard feelings. Just know that your support really does make a difference. Now, without further ado though, let's give it up for today's special guest, the Emmy award-winning educator, Adobe senior designer, smartphone photography trailblazer. Give it up for the creative overlord himself, Russell Preston Brown. Russell. <laughs> It's awesome to have you on the show, man. How are you? Audio here of an audience you get screaming or yelling or clapping. I think. Oh, can you mean one there? One hundred percent, I'll do that. <laughs> I'd like to have that. Um, uh, thank you for that intro. Uh, hello again. Um, uh, it's um, the end of a new year. It's time for us to chat again, isn't it? Absolutely. We should make this a tradition. <laughs> yeah. Our new, it's our December, our getting ready for the new year, we'll call it the getting ready for the new year as a digital photographer um, podcast. Um, I am ready. I am more than ready. I'm excited. I am, I, I'm, uh, do you have your list of questions for me or are we just getting right into the conversation? Oh, we're just uh, getting I, right into it. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pass this back to you to set the stage. And then I'm I'm jumping in and making my opening statement. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Go ahead. Well, I mean, we had a conversation not too long ago, and um, and you know, I think what we've realized is that since we spoke last, a lot has happened. It's incredible all of the things that have that have come along and happened even just in the last year or year and a bit. You know, we talk about AI, we talk about uh, you know, uh, new iPhones and all the rest of it. Technology seems to have just leapt forward on, you know, progress seems to have kind of progressed at an exponential rate. What is going on is what I want <laughs> to know. The, these are wonderful times that we live in. Um, I am blessed that I was born at this time uh, to see all of this and to get to play with all of this. I, I'll, you, I think you probably agree with me there, but I'm an old timer and um Goodness, this is. I'm moving on to my 39th year at Adobe. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess I should just go for 40. What do you think? And so um, I look at the technologies over these 39 years, and I, I can, and I think back on the moment that we both saw layers in Photoshop 3, and I'm comparing that 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 earthquake of that moment to today's. Um, generative fill AI inside of Photoshop. It has changed my life. It has changed my workflow. And um, uh, as I said on the Today Show in 1990, um, they were interviewing me because Photoshop was launching. I said um, to the host, I said, um, I love these tools and I will never give them up. And um, I must agree that I'm going to say that again um, to today. Um, here, here's my, I have, to, I have to start with my opening statement about AI. And are you ready? <laughs> Let's go. Um, um, I see, I've been posting a lot of things with AI on Instagram and Facebook. And you can get a variety of responses to it some of them positive, some of them negative. But I've taken an attitude that this is a new tool. It's a creative new tool. It allows me to do things faster and with, um, I think, better accuracy sometimes. This is not, I did not 
uh, I again, let's, let me restate that. I would always import new imagery into my own photography. I would go out and look for stock photography. This new generative fill in Photoshop has merely given me this resource of stock photography at my fingertips. And I can just type it in and boom, I've got a cloud. I've got a, a cat. We do cats very well, by the way. Um, and it's just this resource I can grab onto and put into my images. However, I have to state each time I post an image that it is my original image that I have then augmented with generative fill because I seem to be the, the everybody who wants to jump, every troll who wants to jump up onto the bridge and, and attack me wants to make sure that I <laughs> am telling them exactly what I'm doing. And so I have made a habit of always stating that it is a composite generative fill, but we both know that others aren't doing that. So wh where am I going with this? The bottom line is this is a creative tool. It's here to stay. You can criticize me. You can jump on the bridge as a troll and hate me, but this is this is the same as being in the dark room in the 1970s as I was, and I was using overlays and copying the likes of Jerry Yulesman in the 70s. I was manipulating my images. I think other photographers were manipulating their images in the dark room. I don't see any difference than today. I just think you have to be honest with your users that you're using generative fill and that's the bottom line uh, to creativity. Um, so I will continue to be creative. I think others should be creative. I'm not inspiring others to lie about their digital photography. I'm inspiring others to use it and then tell us that they did. Okay. There's my opening statement. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, you know. So it goes on and on. Um, it's just that I had some pretty brutal attacks and I had to unfriend people I, I, and, um, and block them because I was, just didn't want to hear their ranting. Um, yeah. It, it's, what, I mean, it's really interesting. It's interesting, isn't it, how, um, how something like MI has really split people's opinions, you know. Um, it's, you know, and, and I fully agree with you that the, the whole idea of enhancing an image isn't anything new. I mean, this goes back to to the days of the darkroom, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, when very often when people who are not necessarily involved in photography ask me about AI and you know, um, but, you know whether I use it in my photography, and I always say like, well, look, I mean, you know, it, previously it used to take me four hours to do that in Photoshop, and now it takes me two minutes. That's very often yeah. that the, is the case. There we have it. Think of those things that we used to struggle at blending two images together wow yeah or removing something do you know how many times <laughs> how many hours that we both spend trying to get in detailing out something that was in the photograph that was intertwined uh, um with the surrounding background gosh oh the, the, that reminds me of the early days of stone knives and bear skins in the 70s when I used rub down type to do, um, you know, advertisements, um, crazy old time stuff. Yeah. So um, I think there's two sides of it. There's the side that um, automation, improving, f making something tedious, faster and more immediate versus where I go in and I replace a sky um, is both of those were, were true in the past, but um, is the fact that we're making it easier for everybody to replace a sky or to uh, place something into their image. Is that empowering them um, to do bad things? Um, here I go. Here we go. Here we go. Off on my other statement, Adobe can come out <clears throat> with an amazing hammer. And we're going to give it to all these people. They're going to build a house with this hammer or they're going to destroy a house with this hammer. It's an amazing tool to, um, to create with. 
And so each is going to choose the direction they go with it. Um, I can also point out the early days. You know, I've been around a long time. <laughs> I can take you back to the day when typography was done on an offset and typography was done by a typesetter and you had to send in instructions to get a block of text. And along comes desktop publishing, um, uh, 1985, and you could set your own text on a Macintosh and um, uh, set it. And everybody uh, said, oh, the world's ending, the world's ending. People have control over typesetting. It's the world's ending. <laughs> and, you know, incidentally, my dad was actually a trained typesetter. So that's, oh, my. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's what he did. And I, I still have his, um, I mean, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but I still have his, um, his whatever you call it, like his um, draft. His his, yeah, his book that he that he made when he was studying and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, no. um, with all different designs and fonts and types and all that kind of stuff. So did it's very set, interesting. Did he set the type physically with the each letter? Okay, the the off that he didn't do. Um, then along came digital type, where you actually typed into a computer and it set the type for you using codes. Um, that was uh, the next phase, but he was more of the the typesetter. He set. Yeah, so he was in he was in the industry when that change happened. So if you imagine, yeah. you know, he was basically a, a traditional typesetter, let's say, in the yeah. early seventies, and yeah. then that change started to happen throughout the late seventies, eighties, um, yes. and then of course, and then of course, desktop publishing became yeah. very big throughout the eighties, and you know, and then Did he. The, uh, uh, question about your father: Did he follow with it? Did he trans transition with it? Or did he resist it? Um, so he actually he he stayed in the same industry uh, for a long time, but he kind of changed. Um, he then started working for a company called Zemet. They used to make big uh, um, printing machines and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. So he was basically then more into um, looking after uh, print studios at the time. So that's that's kind gotcha. of what he did uh, when all yeah. that technology was. But you know, back in the day, I mean, you got to remember that you know the computing power necessary to do some of those things. It would have like taken up a whole room back then. You know, <laughs> yeah. we in the early days, couldn't get into a Macintosh yet. But um, that's when Apple and Adobe came together to make that publishing um, uh, happen. And wow, uh, and uh, and uh, watching this all take place in this transformation happening before me in the last 39 years. Uh, that's what's incredible. I I can't even imagine that I went to school in the dark ages, uh, the, as I call the stone knives and bearskins. <laughs> we came to class <laughs> with those. Um, boy, things have changed. So I think there is change. We've seen change. I think we have accept change, and this change is not going to destroy the world, as some of my followers believe. This this change is going to empower creatives. And what are your thoughts on that? Well, I I think that purely from a, you know, if you bring some social behavior science into the whole thing, you know, I sort of understand that um, humans generally are change adverse. So. Any new thing that comes along, the initial reaction will be, well, hang on a second. What kind of impact is that going to have on life as I know it right now? Because something's yeah. going to change. Um, but of course, what happens is as we get used to the new way things are being done, then, you know, eventually we'll sort of start to understand the, you know, the creative advantages that we have. So, you know, good examples, we were talking about, you know, this situation like typesetting and the, the way print was done in the early 70s and before that. And yeah. you know it's interesting. Actually, I mentioned um, my my dad's um, like a book that he had in a way had all of his artwork and all the stuff that he did whilst he was at college learning all this stuff. And it's interesting, you know, because he did a whole lot of different art projects. So there were, you know, uh, I don't know anything from like a newspaper article to flyer designs and stuff. You know, you realize that even in the '60s and early '70s or whatever, you know, people still made flyers. They still printed T-shirts. They still did all of that kind of stuff. They just did it in a different way. So it's not like we're doing anything different. It's just that we can do things better, more detailed. Yeah. You know, we can we can we can really let our creativity uh, and our fantasy run riot. And yeah. we can actually realize all these things. You know, you can take that into just in my view, you know, you can look at just about any 
um, visual industry, whether that's you know whether that's movies, for example, you know whether it's television, whether it's the thing that we're doing right now, podcasting. I mean, all of these all these media driven you know elements wouldn't be possible was it not for or were it not for the uh, progress in technology yeah. and just as a designer or a photographer or a filmmaker you know um you, eventually you're gonna have i mean you can either this might be you can either embrace those those uh, those new developments you know and allow yourself to Perfect. be even more creative or mm-hmm. you can reject them and actually, there is something positive to that as well. You can yes. reject those things if you want to basically stay true to what you think is the right way to do things for yourself, which is why you can still go and buy film. I mean, if anybody if anybody wants to shoot film, it's great. Go for it. If that's the thing that drives you, absolutely 100%. You we, know, totally. We, we both will have friends, photographers, who will choose to not use generative film. They're also the same people we know who will not remove a telephone pole from their photographs or a telephone line. They won't remove a piece of paper lying on the ground. They're purists. I, I have, I know these, but do you know one? No, oh, absolutely, 100%. And, um, but there's, start, there's the line uh, that we need to draw here. Uh, there's this point where I'll be creative up to this point where if this photo on the other side is editorial or um, proof of fact, then we do not go across that border. That is, uh, in my, if I'm in the news industry or anything related to fact, then I'm not, uh, that is a do not cross that line. And I think Adobe doesn't and wants to help people to not cross that line with these initiatives, these, um, initiatives they're putting out and inserting there's now metadata in every photoshop file and it is locked metadata did you know that i didn't realize it was locked i didn't know that yeah apparently we are locking the metadata into our images so that it knows that genitive fill has been run on this image and it's deeply embedded in the image and you can't erase it did I, I, did I, can I tell the public this? Oh, yes. oh 100%. You um, heard it here first. Yeah, <laughs> so um, that's pretty exciting. And Adobe's um, on top of that issue. And we have to be, we have to, uh, we've taken that that role in this whole process because we're coming out with these tools. And I love the fact that we're taking <clears throat> the ethical role with the photography itself in that we're only sourcing and we're uh, training our AI only on photographs that we own and that are in the Adobe stock library. Um, And we're also including copyright free images that are available um, to us. We even recently Adobe took out all generative fill images from our library. We had some early generative fill images that <clears throat> some of our contributors put into the library. So there was that feedback loop. It, generative fill was working off of generative fill, working off of generative fill. Sooner or later, you're going to get some cats that have um, uh, not only um, 12 paws but you know um, 12 eyes after i, I that in <laughs> a little bit of inbreeding going on with jennifer <laughs> so um I, i'm I, i'm glad that um and it's i i'd like to you know it's nice to be with a company that's going to be concerned with that and are we pointing fingers at others yeah you can make some amazing things with these other applications out there um <clears throat> But um, where was it sourced from? <laughs> yeah, this, I think this is this is of course where you know the, the criticism uh, initially you know came from, or still comes from, is this, this this thought of, well, okay, so what if you are a news outlet? You know, what yeah. if like how can we prove that the image that we're looking at um, yeah. is is actually authentic? And you know, we all know that there are you know, platforms and, and uh, occasions where things are being passed off as true when, when they're not true. And what do they call it nowadays? 
is it an alternate truth or something like that? And you go, well, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> is this thing real or is it not? We yeah. are in the age of, we're in the age of lies and um, um, misinformation. Misinformation, and, yeah. Yeah, and it's really terrible. And um, as our political, um, uh, uh, the atmosphere changes next year for the U.S., it's, I'm, we're going to see some crazy things, I'm sure. The AI is going to manipulate and um, alter the way in which people vote, which is pretty scary. Um, was I involved with that in the development of Photoshop? Who knows? Who knows what somebody evil will do? I think I'm a pretty good judge of judging whether something has been altered with AI, but um, <clears throat> the other day, and I don't know if you've been caught, I saw a most amazing photograph, a portrait uh, that had been done. You, you can appreciate this. And um, I looked at that portrait and said, oh my gosh, what an amazing model. What amazing light. I'm zooming in um, to see the reflections in the eyes and I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. This computer did an amazing job on this portrait, but they missed on the reflections in the eyes. Um, I'm sure now that I'm saying this, the computers are going to listening to me. They're going to change the way they do things. Have you seen a photograph that astounded you uh, and you had to take a double take? Has that moment was, happened to you? Yeah. Oh, only very recently, uh, very, very yeah. recently. Um, in fact, only a few days ago, I, um, oh. I went to a, uh, a print competition uh, with oh, my, no. at my local camera club. Oh, and, no. um, and I came across a portrait of, of a friend of mine, I won't mention the name, <laughs> but if you're listening, I'm, I'm very sorry that I've used it as, a, as an example, but you know, so it goes. Anyway, an amazing portrait, really an amazing portrait. Um, huh. And um, and it only, a, so I give you some context. So a, a couple of weeks earlier, I taught uh, okay. a studio lighting workshop um, where I did a particular lesson on gels. Um, okay. Especially using multiple multiple colors and so on and so forth. Anyway, so I I saw this this portrait and thought oh, it's amazing. It's an amazing uh, portrait of a of a female um, with sort of a, a, a stripe of um, purple light across the center of the face, and then I think um, if I remember correctly, it fell off to some blue uh, on the sides. And I was kind of thinking that looks great. It's amazing, you know. And I'm thinking, wow, this is like it's a really great application of of gel lighting. Yeah. Only then to be told afterwards that that was just that was done in, in Photoshop afterwards. This wasn't even necessarily using AI. It was just like you know, it was it's just a Photoshop job after the fact. And I remember thinking, oh, 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 I'm a little bit disappointed now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just a just a little bit because it's still, I mean, it's still a phenomenal picture. Honestly, happen, phenomenal portrait. See, it happens to us. I yeah. go in. and I'm changing skies. I'm changing foregrounds. Look at my Instagram today. By the way, that's dr underscore brown. Um, look at today. I have um, I couldn't get some models out to the desert where it's flooding in Death Valley, so I brought the flooding to them. And half of me is a little bit guilty, <laughs> and the other half is so this is pretty cool. Um, so we both caught ourselves. We love AI, but we don't want to be fooled, yet we're trying to fool others. That's pretty bizarre. Um, uh, how do you define, can, can I sit on the couch? Can you define why I'm trying, I'm not trying to fool others, but yes, I am trying to fool others. I, I think I'm for me, I tell, you what, I tell you what it was for me. For me, it was like this thing where... I, initially, I looked at this particular image, this portrait, right. and I thought, wow, there's a lot of skill involved. That's what I thought. It's like, this right. is actually difficult. You know, it's difficult to light something like that. It's, the lighting was really bad. And, and actually, not to take anything away from the actual portrait, the, the initial uh, lighting of it was very well done. So it was actually, you know, it was a very well shot portrait. And even without the color, the addition of the color, it would have still been a really great portrait. Um, the, the color was just what made it really pop for me. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. And I kind of thought, wow, you know, there's a lot of skill involved in that. And then, you know, and then uh, it was almost like, you know, it's like somebody like popped the balloon and I kind of thought, oh, well, yeah, that's not hard to do in Photoshop. 
<laughs> um, okay, you know, maybe you, not so much. Um, but... you, you brought up a point here. Uh, I don't want AI to take over my world, and I'm not going to type in um, uh, Mar uh, Princess on Mars holding a frog. I'm, I'm not going to type that in and make an image. I'm going to start with my own image. And I'm, I, will, I will always start with my own image. Listen to me say this. I will never give up my vinyl records. Um, <laughs> I, will, I will always start with my own image because I want to go grab something. As you said, it starts with a good image. I, I think you have to start with a good image and then you can add things to it. Can I take a bad image and make it a really great image with AI? Huh. Do I have the skill? Sometimes I wonder. I think there's a point of I take a, a, a thousand pictures to get one frame that I like. You know, the, the gesture, the movement, the smile on the face. The, and so... I, I, that's my starting point. That's a really great photo. And then I'm going to add something to it. I did that with my own portrait the other day. I found a really great portrait. And then I, I, w I said to myself, I wish I had a guitar in the shot. So I make a selection and add the guitar to add to the story. So I took a great photo and I think made the story better with it. Um, yikes. Yeah. Um, I think, um, yeah, d d am I, am I dangerous? <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Eddie, again, not, not too long ago, I, I came across, um, a, a mutual friend of ours who designs yeah. Yeah. movie posters. Whoa, oh, no say. names are ever mentioned. No names. No, 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 don't, so, do um, don't do it. I, I mentioned I, the name I, once and yeah. I had to tell the podcaster to delete that podcast because I mentioned no, no. the name. So no, no, you'll regret mentioning anyone's oh, yeah. name. I, I'm Please. not, I don't mention I any names. But I'll tell you about this. I know this guy in Norway, by the way, and you don't want anything to do with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I came across, um, I came across some uh, movie posters actually on Netflix. I, I, there was a particular show I watched on Netflix. And the one thing um, that really struck me was the, the cover art, like the, you know, yeah. Uh, the the cover art for this particular TV show, and yeah. uh, it was it's black and white. It was absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. The detail in it was incredible. There's a lot of hair detail in it, and man, very yes. And it but it it still it looked wild. It was a black and white rendition. It was phenomenal. There's two images. They were both you know, and I kept looking at those on Netflix, thinking like, wow, this is very cool. Anyway, so then later on, I found out that a mutual friend of ours was responsible for creating that image. I and know. I think I think you probably do, but yeah. um, what really struck me because I um, yeah. eventually got to see the original photographs that were taken that were taken oh, for this yeah. particular shot, and Perfect. they were and they were oh, literally. No, 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 this is a good point. I want to make a comment after your comment. Yeah, go ahead. So so I was shocked to see how bad the original photographs actually were. I mean, it was literally like somebody just flipped out their like you know flip phone from 2008 and taken some like partially overexposed images of that particular actor and i know that that's kind of what happened because i know this you know i was told yeah. the story behind these images um you know it was just like offset you know outside of the um the, of the studio grounds whatever you know somebody's just taking these, these couple of snaps and they basically uh form the the basis to these amazing images and of course, that is to me that was like incredible skill. I mean, that's you know that is those that blew my mind. Those people you're talking about are very skilled on top of having these new tools. Yes, nothing outweighs or nothing can beat skill, and skill always will be better than AI. Did I just say that? Yes, yes, that's true. Um, uh, skill will always win the day and um, uh, these people you're talking about and I'm familiar with their work um, it's quite remarkable uh, what they're doing which brings up a point I love to see behind the scenes I love to see you you and I can learn so much by seeing the before and after right because we can 
you know, we can run the calculations. And I, I like to do that, but I find myself hesitating to show the before um, because I think it's going to, two things. <laughs> I think it's going to show them how far I pushed this from the original. And also the second one is I get so many trolls jumping on the bridge and going, I like the original better. <laughs> <laughs> if I, so the, I, sorry, I'm turning this interview back on you. Do you show your befores to educate um, others? And are you so to has... educate? Yeah, to educate. Yes, I mean, yeah, of course. So if it's you know, if I'm if I'm sort of describing a particular process and I want to Here. showcase how you can get from point A to point B, yes, I'll you know I'll do show the the befores. I mean, um, you know, a lot of the time, most recently, of course, for those listeners and viewers who've been listening to the last few episodes um, of the podcast, you, you will know this. You know, I started making. Um, tutorial videos for Platypod. And so I'll demonstrate I'll demonstrate the whole process of how I can create the, the final image um, in great detail. And of course, it always starts with something that looks less than great, <laughs> you know, but then it's about, it's about taking somebody through the process, you know, whether that's, um, whether that's a physical, uh, and I have to say, it's, it's mainly a physical process of like lighting and, you know, um, well, the, the, uh, so the videos I do for Platypod are not necessarily um, that heavy on the on the editing per se. I will run through the editing process, but it'll be heavily abbreviated. You know, I'll basically say, okay, I'll do this in Lightroom, then I'll hop over to Photoshop and I do this, and then you know I'll finish it off in Lightroom, and there we are. That, that that's a gear. That, that that that's I love to see where people put the lights and where you put the Platypod, um, its location, and then I can. Uh, I can, I essentially copy things. Yes, yes, I do. Why do I look at Instagram and Facebook? I look for ideas that I can copy. Yeah, yeah. But copy and add a bit of creative twist to it. But um, you're, that uh, that's a little bit different than than me showing this. You know, I'm not showing them where I put my lights. I'm showing them this raw image like these two did with... Um, the um, Netflix um, ad, the black and white yeah. you spoke of earlier, it is so raw um, and shocking um, that I think it distracts people. That's the thing I was going to say. It distracts them from looking at my image just as a piece of artwork. And they are going, they, they just like you with your light sources, your... Um, your gels, you were a little disappointed. And I don't want to disappoint anyone. I want them to look. That's like seeing behind the scenes of making of the Mona Lisa. Do we want to see what she really looked like and what the setting was? I'm not sure because it, she might have been really ugly. And, it, and he's, his imagination the, in the painting Um. Mm. That's what I want to see. I want to I want to enjoy the moment of art, and that's why I post my images on Instagram. I want you to enjoy it and not criticize it. Um, and if, you're right. This, of course, this is one of the dangers of of showing the behind the scenes in a sense, is because you know yeah. very often, and this this is this can be true for you know books that you love or or TV shows that you love or whatever you know oh. or, or images, of course, or statues. I mean, what if? What if, you know, we, I mean, we marvel at, at um, Michelangelo's David, you know, and think, oh, how amazing this piece of art is, what skills are, but what if we could time travel back and talk to Michelangelo directly about it? What if he said, like, I, I never liked it. I think I completely screwed it up. It's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Worst thing I've ever made. Would, that would be would really disappointing. That. Yeah. I mean, if he would say those things, just like any artist, we're all, um, we're thin skinned as an artist and um, we can... I can get, you know, a thousand people who like my image and it only takes one person, one troll to jump on the bridge and I'm, I've lost, I ruined my day, um, if not month. And so I, I want people to see it, but it's that sort of closed mind. I want them to see it. I want them to enjoy it, but I don't want them to tell me how, 
I'd rather have them unfriend me than tell me how much they hate it. Wow. Of course. Yeah. yeah I think really. I think that's you know that's that's perfectly normal because I think as artists I think we we of course we love you know admiration and adoration and all the rest of it. Um, it's of course it's a lot more difficult to to deal with you know negative with criticism. Yeah. Um, the question is always, of course, how much attention do we pay to the criticism? Um, I always love this when you know when you, when you hear like from interviews with like people like Harrison Ford or something who just really don't read the press at all. <laughs> you know, and it's the, at the point where it's go, oh, well, you know what? We um oh should I mention? Oh, I'm not gonna. We decided not to mention names. So there's this photographer. He's been in the industry for a long time. Um, works with Canon. He's in Arizona. There. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, he, um, he doesn't read his Instagram or Facebook at all. He doesn't look at it. He never looks at it. Um, he has someone else review it for him. And I love, <laughs> and so all of it's filtered through and then the responses, um, and in this case his the reviewer, the person looking at all of it happens to be his wife. And, no. um, okay. And I catch myself sometimes making comments about the um, work, and says, "I'll be reminded, you know, this this isn't uh, this is his wife <laughs> you're chatting with right now. It's not not the photographer. Th there is that an interesting, and that's an interesting way of he, he never comes, never has to deal with that. It, it gets filtered through the process, and you can remain the artist that you want to be." And in one of his messages to his users is become an artist. Be, you are an artist. Um, accept the fact that you're an artist, you're a photographer, you're an artist. You will make the images be what you want them to be. Um, I, um, I work with uh, Julianne Cost. Look, I said a name, I don't know, at Adobe and, um, Julianne said something very uh, point, very pointed, very nicely said to me. It, it makes a good point. R Russ, are you posting your images on Instagram to please yourself or to please others? <laughs> and and that's that. There therein lies the whole message that um, you have to post these images to please yourself. And Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was, I can get caught up in that. I am a victim um, of, you know, uh, um, I call it the um, addiction disorder, the social media addic addiction disorder. Uh, I am addicted to likes, and I, I admit it, you know. Um, and it, I like to see them and I like to get that um, feedback. However, recently, I don't know, we can talk about that other aspect of, of life is recently with all these algorithm changes, everything's changed. I don't, I think maybe one fourth of my audience must see the stuff I'm posting. <laughs> we'll get into that. There's, a, there's another yeah. Old podcast. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, and you know, you're absolutely right. Of course, it's, it's, it's really mesmerizing to see, you know, your subscriber rate, you know, increase and, and likes and, and so, so forth. Yeah. And actually, just, just as I mentioned that, uh, I should just mention that you know, very recently, a couple of days ago, uh, the Camera Tech Podcast actually hit the 1,000 uh, subscriber yeah. barrier on uh, on YouTube. And uh, there it goes. It's a, a massive thank you out there to Richard Baker, who was the 1,000th, I can't even pronounce this, 1,000th. That's a difficult one. The 1,000th uh, subscriber to uh, to the Camera Tech Podcast on YouTube. Um, massive, massive, massive thank you. And uh, yeah. You know, just be reminded if you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, you know, make sure you hop over to YouTube and just hit that hit that subscribe oh, button. It's, it's free; it doesn't cost you anything. It's uh, but it it makes my day. Thank you so much we're, for subscribing. We're, we're saying profound things, right, Brev? You know about your your podcast and and people liking what you're doing. Um, here's my profound <laughs> statement for the day: is each day I have I, I just have to stop. And tell a, f a photographer that you see in Instagram or Facebook, tell them how m great their work is. You know, um, uh, give them, give somebody a compliment. Um, boy, it can make their day. And um, I don't know how, I, 
maybe you could write 39 years at Adobe. If I compliment a photographer, it, it blows them out of the water. They're going like, wow, Russell Brown just gave me a compliment. And, and I still I feel that. that. I still feel that when you when you comment on, on one of my posts. I absolutely oh my do. God. Yeah, I absolutely need, do feel that. I need 100%. to be more aware of that power. And everybody needs to be aware of that power. We all have that power to compliment somebody and just take the time to tell them that um, the photo looks great. Um, and even and Of course yeah. you do. And uh, it's, it's yeah. like, you know, th that's this thing. So, you know, this is it's actually a really good example. So, you know, I, of course, you know, we all like when, when somebody, um, you know, likes an image or even when they, com when they take out the time to actually write a comment, that's even more of, more yeah. of an honor, you know? And of course, occasionally, like, for instance, when, you know, I get comments like from yourself, for example, or likes or something, I was thinking like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's probably not that bad then. <laughs> well, trust uh, me, trust me. Okay, here I'm going to tell you right now, if I take the time to write a comment, then you have grabbed my imagination. You've grabbed my attention. You've done something that I wish I could have done. Um, yeah, that there, there it is in a nutshell. Um, and um, I'm envious. Oh gosh, and I'll read. <laughs> There's nothing worse than being envious of the skill of another photographer and then my mind starts twisting like, how can i go do that i need to do that <laughs> yeah no, no. That's a, did i see one of your portraits and then i set up my lights to see if i could do a self-portrait okay. in, in that <laughs> style uh, yes you have a really nice style that i haven't quite figured out yet how's he doing that <laughs> <laughs> I, the little, I, I didn't have any, no photographic, you know, I was darkroom training back in my right. days, but, um, my idea of photographic training is going to my friend in Arizona. Um, uh, and, um, um, bringing in a model because he can't resist a good model walking into the studio, bringing a model. Hey, could you show me where you might put the lights for this? For yeah. This? <laughs> it's very nice to me and allows me to um to do that and um that's where i've learned i i, I look at um um okay i look at joel grimes work and i analyze how he's doing it and then joel's the type that will take the photograph and he has no hesitation telling you that he's manipulated the photograph yeah. and then um, um then i also I analyze the the lights in the eyes for Joel's shots and both for Greg Gorman's shots. A film with Greg Gorman, Mr. Movie Star, um, and so um, yeah, that's my that's my education in lighting. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but that's a that's actually you know I think that's a really important point. Um, I think that as a you just I think skill is important as a photographer yeah. and yes you can go in and you can relight things after the fact kind of, but but actually when we're you know it's just like a a musician yeah. like let's say as a guitarist you need to understand you need to know the instrument you need to know where the notes are you need to know how to play the thing You're a um, you need to understand that for instance you know the, you can play the same note let's say in high e or something you can play it in five different places on the guitar on yeah. five different strings but or depending on how many frets you are six different yeah. strings or seven, if you have a seven string guitar. Never mind. But you can play that. You know, you can play that same note on different strings. But what you have to understand is, is that note will sound ever so slightly different if you're playing it as an open E or if you're playing it, let's say, on a fifth fret on the B string. Because it's a different string, it will have a different tonality to it. And when you are creating music, you know, you're you, you have to develop the skill to basically think on different levels. What note you play is. A yeah. great way to start, but it's just that it's a great way to start, and everything else then builds on that. On that, if what yeah. you know, what's your string choice? What's your timbre? Like, what, what are you going to do with that note? You know, how are you going to manipulate it? That's where the music really is, and and in photography, it's the same thing. It's just light instead of notes. You have hit on a very interesting point there. The appreciation of music and the appreciation of a fine photograph takes training and you can appreciate the tonality differences between two different, you know, the, the guitar strength. I wouldn't 
be able to discern whether it was a good guitarist or a bad guitarist. But I do know about photography and I can appreciate, that's a very interesting point. We can, so if we hear from somebody who is a musician expert and tells me, well, that little riff you just wrote is, oh, that's, that's amazing. And that high G, yo, oh, when you, yeah, I've never seen anybody do that, that particular key, that um, finger positioning for that, that letter. We'll say that the same of a photograph. And so when we hear a compliment, we can appreciate it even more if we know the person knows how to sing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That was, knows the tunes, knows the, all of the elements of it, knows the lighting, knows the chords. Um, wow, that's a, that's a nice correlation between the two and being that you are a musician. You are a musician, as I Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't totally see uh, guitar always in the back of your images. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, I always say I used to be a musician, but of course, you, uh, it's, it's yeah. seven the fact that I, you used uh, to be, you're always a musician, I guess. I always wanted to be a musician, but I've made time to set myself down and focus. Um, uh, I was around musicians in the early 70s and found myself among some musicians, guitar, banjo, mandolin players in Mexico, of all places. And I went out and bought a guitar and started to play because you were around them. But then as I drifted off away from them, I didn't have that influence anymore. I didn't keep it going. I think, um, yeah, it's it's one of those things you just have to keep up with. You probably do you practice every day. Do you? I, I don't No, I don't practice every day anymore. I don't I don't get to play every day. Um, I still keep my so if, you know i keep my fingers in it like i you know i do still play i uh, under normal circumstances i play in a little band I, I don't do it professionally anymore like like i used to when i do, we, do it professionally however you know one. i did have to i did have to keep my chops up as they say yeah for sure let's let's switch bring this back around to the conversation in that do we need to set up lights every day do we need to go pick up our phone in my case every day and our camera every day I think we do. I think we have to exercise those things, and um, I can for, I, I can forget how to light something, you know, um, or um, and how did I do that before? Do you know I've actually watched some of my own tutorials to, to remember how I did something? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's thirty nine years. That's funny. I yeah. <laughs> Had to watch my own tutorial. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, I I think um, this practice makes perfect. Um, um, oh, oh, here's another quote from Joel Grimes. As another quote, did, did I promise I'd never mention a name? Um, I, uh, <laughs> no, I won't make you. Uh, um, there's nothing. Um, uh, what? Okay, come on, Russ. Um, hard work will always outdo talent every day. Let's say hard work will always do outdo talent every day. <laughs> I know that sort of, because the, the moral of that story is that if you work really hard, you're going to be the point of a talent. But Joel saw people who were much more talented than he was, but he works his butt off. Oh, I've yep. never seen anybody work harder. And he will outwork you. <laughs> he will outwork. Yeah. He will outwork you. And that's, to... I mean, that's a, that, exactly. But you're absolutely right. You know, I, I used to say this um, in connection with music, for example. Oh, you know, okay. and this is a, this is a really good example, actually. I mean, again, it's the you know the the correlation between um, you know visual arts and music is that right. there's so many different similarities there. You know, I I remember when you know. I used to have people come to me and say like, oh, well, you know, here, like, oh, you're such a talented guitar player, da, da, da. you know, I wish I had your talent. And and I'm thinking, well, what you don't know is that, you know, I started playing the guitar when I was six and I spent 15 hours a day practicing up to the age of 29, you know, so, so I don't really think that's talent. I actually think if you, you could just about take anyone and given that kind of workload, you could yeah. probably co you know create. I mean, there, there probably be many people out there that, yeah. with that amount of practice, would play, probably play much better than 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 I ever will. Yeah, you know, it's to me, yeah. it's always been it's it's always been the graft, and I approach everything yeah. like that. Ph photography being one of those things, you know, for yeah. example, um, you know, and 
when we when we started this bit of the conversation, you, I remember you, you you mentioned um Joel Grimes and the way that he likes things. And do you you know you go and you learn from him. Yeah. I think that is super important. It's we're you know, we're living in an age where it's never been easier than uh, than right now to f to find yeah. out how people do things. You know, once you get yes. sort of a base level of knowledge, you get to the point where you start to be able to um what's the word? Backwards engineer imagery. And yeah. I love doing that. You know, where I, I look at an image and I think, how the heck did they do that? Yeah. And then I want to try and find out. And and often, you know, you can do a little bit of research and you can know how, how things were done. But often it's, you know, you just it's just trial and error. You just try and light something, you go, ah, oh, so that's I thought I thought that would work, but it didn't. And I wonder why that didn't work. And then it's of course the the thing then is to figure out why does it work? I'm doing exactly the same thing right now. And I'm just going to, let me think when this episode will come out, because that will determine whether I can talk about it or not. Let me think. Uh, where are we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we can talk about it oh, because yeah, by, the time, I, by the time, by the time this episode comes out, this would have already happened. So well, I, I don't know what your timing is on this episode, but I, I just wanted to, um, you're talking about things that we're working on right now and um, what we're planning to do. And I thought I might just um, mention to your audience that um, I am uh, I am staying around at Adobe for another year. <laughs> and I haven't retired yet. And I'm going to focus on um, uh, giving back to Adobe. And so I'm traveling to several offices this year and doing special events. Um, I'm not going to the London office, uh, that, that, sorry, um, but I'm going to do um, special hands-on photographic events where I'm bringing this tin type simulation, this where we take the photographs, the portraits, and then we transfer them onto metal, but we do it with modern technology and, and a printer. And um, uh, in the US, we're using is isopropanol alcohol. In Europe, we're going to use... Um, Everclear. Have you heard of Everclear? It's a, it's it's a you can drink it. It's jet fuel that you can drink. Oh. It's ridiculous, ninety nine proof alcohol that can kill you. Oh, wow! And so we transfer these on. So I'm going to go to um, the Seattle office and work with the engineers who created Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm going to go to the Minnesota office and work with them. And I'm going to the Hamburg office in Germany, um, uh, and I'll set up. And we'll take um, images and then transfer them onto metal. It's sort of a uh, yeah, the programmers don't often get to do the wild and crazy things I do, like at an Adobe Max, where I can bring people together and experiment with imaging. And so I just thought to myself, hmm, why don't I bring that sort of Adobe Max, you know, fun, uh, creative. Um, project to a group of engineers who created Lightroom and Photoshop. What do you think? What do you think? Is this a good, I think it's a good idea. It's a good I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I oh, think it's, it's a, a, good it's a brilliant excuse to go. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. And then from um, Hamburg, um, I'll go off to Norway and meet up with the usual suspects in, <laughs> in Norway. God, I just, but let's talk about, I love a good model. Oh my gosh. That as, and my appreciation, you know, I started at Adobe as a graphic designer. I'm doing the annual reports for heaven's sakes. You know, boring, boring. <laughs> and <laughs> now I've turned myself into a photographer. My gosh, I look at amazing models and I'm just so envious. Like, how did they get that model? Where did they get that model? Who's who's doing the makeup on that model? I think I could live the rest of my life with a makeup artist, a stylist, and an amazing model. And that's what you just, and oh, oh, and they come in with a new dress or new outfits. And this could be a male or female model. Um, yeah, I, that, I'm giving you my, my wish um, that um, that's that. Gosh. If, some, if somebody said to me, Russ, we're going to bring together five amazing models with amazing outfits. And I've got makeup artists and you can come to it. And it's only going to cost you $20,000. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's that bad. It's that bad. Do you have a, what is your, what's your passion? Um, a model, an amazing model. 
just blows me away. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, See what, what, what? So I love, and this is it's something I've learned about myself actually only fairly recently, I think. Um, I love working, I, I love photographing humans in, yeah. yes. um, you know, in the studio, of course, and you know, I like, I like to create, um, imagery that's maybe a little bit different from the kind of thing that, that we used to necessarily that I have, I think I have a fairly decent sense of humor, although, you know, I live in the UK, what can I say? Anyway, so, um. You know, so, and uh, I like to bring that out. Of... Why did you move to the UK? And you... Oh, sorry, I, I, I distracted. Oh. No, 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 it's fine. I, it's, I moved to the UK uh, to study music, actually, originally. So that's oh. that's how I that's how I ended up in London, yeah. Um, well, and uh, and then then I got stuck twenty five years ago. <laughs> twenty stop. no, no, hold on, twenty seven years ago. Yeah, that sounds bad. But this how, does this relate to our relationship? Well, yeah, yeah, of course, you... yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there were, there were two things. So I, I went to music college in uh, in the UK, and um, whilst there was, so the original plan was actually to move um, to the states after oh. um, after graduate. But the reality was that I started working in the, in the industry whilst I was at college. So I got I started to get booked for sessions whilst oh. I was still at college, um, and so you know, and then of course, just like any creative industry, you know, you. You okay. go to one studio and do a session, you get to know the producer and then they'll call you back and they go like, oh, I've got this other session, you know, do you want to come record that? And and so, you know, you just you just start networking and you get to know more and more people. And huh. um, unlike the US, where you have a number of different musical centers, you know, you've got LA and New York City and you've got Nashville and so on. Um, in the UK, really, everything is very much concentrated in London. So it feels like the entire music industry happens to be in London. It's not entirely uh, true because we could mention this as well, but, but really, you know, all the, the stuff that's happening is actually one way or another is coming out of London. And so the um, the kind of, you know, the the network is pretty small in London. It's, it's incredible. Uh, I've been in many situations where, you know, uh, I'd, I'd record back in the day, you know, I'd record a record and then, um, you know, I'd, I'd go to the launch party and then I'd, I'd meet people that were also involved in the same record and you go like oh i didn't oh okay cool i didn't know that guy was involved in this and and it's <laughs> it's just you know what i mean i mean it's, it's just like um it's it's a fairly small place with you know in, in the grand scheme of things and uh, so sorry, yeah, I, and i i distracted you offline by the way i i that's that's all right that's no. all right no but you know so and and in, in a weird way i actually i sort of find the world of photography is not too dissimilar um in the sense that it's it's a really nice community. Yeah. But it's not necessarily, of course, with the technology that we have today, it's not limited just to one place. Like, you know, we're sitting in different places on almost on opposite sides of the planet, and yet we're having this conversation, you know. And um, and so that's, you know, and to me, the the vehicle for that was really this podcast, you know, that, that really allowed me to actually then connect with people all over the world and, you know, and, and make a thing. But, um, but yeah, so come, come back to photography there for a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just really back in. Pushed you off the yeah. uh, edge there. <laughs> sorry, sorry about when, when people talk, start talking to me about music, it's uh, I can go off on a tangent. But, but anyway, you so always... you know, the, the thing about, so one of the things I've learned uh, fairly recently, like I said, you know, I, I love photographing people. I, I, I love um, working ah. with lights and I, I love experimenting and I love, you know, um, moving things around. And I think, again, Photography is not too dissimilar from music. You know, my, my wife always said, like, when we first got to know each other, like, I used to have tons of guitars and amplifiers. Now I have tons of lights and cameras. It, I always come with a lot of equipment. It doesn't matter what it is. I was, cleaning, I was just cleaning out my room. Um, my kids moved out of the house, and so we just right. took over their rooms and turned them into. One is a photo studio, and the other one's an art studio. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, so we were on um, uh, our favorite, uh, a model, a model. Wouldn't you... That, don't you want to work with a makeup artist and a stylist? Come on. Oh, absolutely. So, so for me, you know, like I said, you know, I, what? I come from a, a place in my head where I, I love working with humans, with models. You know, I love, yeah. I love lighting you. Is there something to me? There's something very special about uh, lighting the human shape and the human face and sort of, and, and, and garnering out that expression as well as another thing I love mm -hmm. is, is, you know, human expression of facial expressions and stuff. 
um, and the stories that I can tell and so on. Um, but what I have recently learned about myself is, is that I, I really love working on location. That's, that's just something uh, more, um, I don't know. There's just something wild about that, you know, that you, you, you match the model with the location and the background yeah. and you create something that actually that tells even more of a story. And of course, you know, again, as listeners that, and, and viewers of this podcast will know, I've recently spent some time in Norway. Um, full circle. Well, you've just brought us full circle. I will never, you and I will never give up going on location. We're not going to type it into a computer and go on location. It's not, yeah. no, that's not going to happen. Except for maybe um, Space Girl on Mars. Uh, no, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, even then, <laughs> I'm going to take that model and go to the desert and create a Mars like location. It's just yeah. that, that is, I, I cannot imagine myself giving up going on location and traveling and um yeah that that's and, something you know, there's, there's yeah, something that happens you know there's something that happens and again i'm uh, yet again i'm drawing a, a relation a, a comparison to music you know when as a musician when when you when you get into a rehearsal studio with other musicians or, or a studio in general and you start coming up with ideas you know you start yeah. working on a song for example it's the 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 sum of all of the brilliant brains that come together to create something the sum of that is always much bigger than anything that you yourself could have possibly come up with in the first place and this is the right. thing and it always takes like different turns and, and again the same thing is true in photography like you know example being um you know working with uh, with rule vermeer in uh, in norway yeah. I absolutely loved it because actually as a model he was able to to bring something to the party that just um, that elevated anything yeah. and everything that I could I could have come up with from the outset. And that's really what I love with working with other people. And, you know, that includes there, there, makeup artists. There's only, well, there is only one rule. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. He is a character. He is, he knows his modeling so well. And um, I was really fortunate um, to come across him in my you know, my research online. I uh, I think you now know Rule because of me. I, I mean, yes. let me just trace this Correct. back. I find him online because he's so out there and go go go. And then I I invited him to L.A., but that didn't work out. Um, and um, then went to Amsterdam to do that photography. He's very special in industry. He he has all of his own equipment. He has all of his own outfits. And when he puts on the outfit, he goes into character. And you and I both know we have yeah, one Viking that's just like, what do you want me to do now? What, what, how, how, what am I supposed to be looking at? <laughs> no, yeah. Rule just turns into a Viking and you just happen to be there to capture him. Um, being the Viking on the coast of Norway. Yeah, we can get into a rule. Um, uh, he's um, uh, quite a find, quite um, uh, oh, a, a special. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in fact, if you, if you are, again, if you are listening to the uh, to the audio version, or of course you're watching on, on YouTube, um, I did interview Rule on the show um, a few weeks back. I will put so, a link yes. um, up here somewhere if you're on YouTube. Um, but yeah, do me a favor and check it out. Very interesting to hear uh, you know, to, to hear a, a model's perspective to photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he has a goal in his mind. It's so clear. He wants to become famous. I think he wants to become a famous movie star, doesn't he? <laughs> he truly oh, yeah. does. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, he he would love television to come along. He's got a friend, um, the um, the uh, Dutch giant. Are you familiar with the Dutch giant? Oh, yes. I've heard of him, yeah. And he's appeared in some um, movies uh, recently, um, Harrison Ford movie, um, and also um, another uh, movie. Gosh, what was he in? He was even in, yeah, it was um, it, with Harrison Ford. I was thinking it was um, 007, but I think it was Harrison Ford um, and uh, Raiders uh, Lost Ark movies. And oh. so um, he's had that taste. And so he's seen his friend 
capture this moment in getting on screen and being this character. And I, she's, he must, he must, that's what he's striving for to get that visibility to be that person. Um, and he's also, also, he, I wonder why he missed his opportunity. He's always wanted to go to LA I, I, and, and, you know, see the LA scene, the Hollywood scene, but it was during COVID. And so things got a little confusing and we, we didn't quite get there. Um, 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 uh, uh, let, uh, do I have any, you said some profound things. You, you said some profound things today. I've got to come up with something else profound. Um, and <laughs> I think it's just, um, the creativity, our, our tools, uh, like rule, I think you have to have a vision of where you're going and don't give up, um, strive, um, every day get out there, show off your work. Don't be shy like myself. You know, I'll hesitate posting something. Oh, is anybody going to like it? <laughs> and oh, just put it out there. Um, have you ever taken anything down because you didn't? I, I'm asking you another question. Have you ever taken anything down the next day after you posted because it didn't quite come up to your level? Like, you know, that really wasn't one of my best images and I'm going to bring it down. Have you ever done that? Yeah, I've taken that, yeah, I've taken. Yeah, I've taken stuff down where you know I just I looked at it the following day and I thought actually no, that's not you know because hey, sometimes in the heat of the moment you know the, the problem is always that when you're when when you spend a lot of time with a particular image let's say you're editing it and you you know um, you're almost like you're, you're self hypnotizing yourself into thinking oh this is great this is great but then when yeah. once you had a little a little bit of a break from it. Right, yeah. um, you come back to and you go like, actually, that wasn't that's, always right. That's the test I do. Um, oh, I know what I have to tell everybody my workflow. That's my test. I'll do it one day and then you have to look at it the next day. You have to open it up. It's a fra fresh new image. You bring it up on the screen as if you're looking at it on Instagram. And if you don't have that rush that comes over, you're like, wow. If you don't have that yourself, after you've looked at it the next day, um, then um, it, we both know there, there's that, that's a, there's that moment where you go, this is damn good. <laughs> I need to post this. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, well, this is okay. If I, um, if I send an image off to one of my friends um, and ask them their opinion of it, then <laughs> it's yeah. not worthy. It's not worthy. It's, um, uh, you, we both, we have to know that it's right and it, it hits the mark and it's, it has the one point, what's that? 1.2 seconds that people scrolling, if you don't catch me in yeah. 1.2 seconds, then, um, they're on their way and you're gone. <laughs> and often, you know, the, the other thing that happens though, you know, sometimes is, uh, you know, they actually not only sometimes quite often. I, you know, I create an image and I think that I'm really into that image. I think, wow, this is awesome. You know, it's amazing. And I'm sort of, you know, I'm very proud of, of that particular image, let's say, and I'm, I'm thinking like, this is amazing, you know, blah, blah. Then I post it and then there's like hardly any reaction to it. Now, um, it, it and yeah. on one hand, I'm sort of a little bit, maybe I feel a little bit disappointed because I think, well, I like it so much. How come nobody else seems to? Um, and it maybe it's right. taken me a little while. To yeah. just get over that, you know. So, wow. well, here's my <laughs> so um, I, I know you want to photograph me. Um, and I, uh, that's my one problem in life is that I photograph well and I can take on a character. I think I, think I can outdo rule. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> can upset. outdo rule. Um, and so, yeah, I'll go to a location and uh, Russ, can we take some pictures of you? Well, I can't take pictures of myself. That's my, my biggest regret in life. I can't get behind the camera of taking pictures of myself. I'm stamping on the, the as the microphone. Who was stamping on the table? Um, the microphone. Uh, yeah, you want to you want to take a picture of yourself. You want to um, um, be behind the camera. You know, I just got a little remote control clicker. I see you're taking portraits of yourself as well. Are you doing remotes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I either do remotes or I set it to, um, you know, like 20 shots in a row, basically, uh, or something like that. Yeah. So I'm, I do, I do both. It, um, so I used to, I used to only work with a remote 
and I used uh. to have it tethered to a screen. So basically, you know, I would I would take a shot, and yeah. then I would study it, and I would go like, okay, I need to move this hair this way and make that little that. adjustment, and then I would sort of inch myself closer to the final sort of image. Like a good example would be. Um, I did a, a, a three heads in a, in a row shoot of myself where I'm slicing eleven in midair. So I, I see there. So for for this shot, I sketched out the basic image beforehand, so I knew where the knife was going to be and the where the lemon was going to be and so on. Um, but then, actually, getting, you know, getting my hands at the knife in the right position and making sure the blade is exactly where it's supposed to be, that really took some time. And it literally just took, you know, taking one shot, moving it a little bit, going okay. Is that what the knife's going to be? You know, click another shot. Mm, okay, let's try that. And so, yeah, I used to I used to remote in a I think a two or three second delay. So it'd be basically um, click the remote, throw the remote away, pause, boom. You know, look at it. I will go in to the shot and just look around. You know, you know click, 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 click. Hmm. I, I do the random one hundred shots and then I review them, and I find one I like. I, so I do I, that too. Yeah, I do that too sometimes, and especially when I'm doing. Um, I think in particular when I'm when I'm shooting myself for thumbnails nowadays. You I know. think that good advice. Maybe where here's another profound thing to say. Like I'm into profound things today. Take don't you think people should take portraits of themselves to learn what from this it? process? Yeah, Definitely. and um, um, learn from the posing process. Learn from the um the the lighting process you certainly I can learn a lot from setting up the lights and um on myself and so I can mimic to repeat those yeah. at the next time I do a photograph I think it's an interesting um aspect to it I but here's the I'm circling back around again we were mentioning likes cool. and you're mentioning you post something and um people you think oh this is really wonderful and then nobody likes it well I go through this. It, it, this sounds really terrible. I go through a post, 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 post. You know, outdoor shot, scenic shot, um, uh, uh, shot, shot of a um, model, and you know, it's sort of like mm, it's sort of like nobody's even listening. And I go, okay, here I go. So then I post a, a self portrait. <laughs> Everyone, every one of my friends will click on a self-portrait. It's sort of like poor Ross. He had to post a self-portrait to get our <laughs> attention. Isn't that hilarious? Um, I can get more likes and more clicks. Because um, in 1.2 seconds, they recognize you. And <laughs> out of pity, oh, yeah. they click. They click well, the but it's 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 a, I think it's a you know it's probably what they call the recognition bias or something. You know, when you recognize something in the image, yeah. you're more likely to pay attention to it. Yeah, you know, and and you know, I tell you what, you said something that's uh, that's really really important. Um, oh, 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 whoa, whoa, yeah. everybody! You said a lot I of said, things that are very important. Everything said you said is so important. I'm ready. Tell me what profound what thing I said. said. So, um, one of the things I find a lot is when you know uh, when I teach. Um, lighting workshops, for example, I find that people uh, mm -hmm. tend mm -hmm. to have very little. Well, those people who come to my lighting workshops very often don't have a lot of lighting experience. Okay, and um, but they may actually own <clears throat> some strobes or at least some speed lights and maybe some you know some modifiers like a softbox or or even if it's just a little clip clip on softbox or whatever it may be. Um, and I always find it I find it quite fascinating because. Um, I can tell you, I mean, ever since I bought my first flash and my first pop-up softbox, I started taking pictures of myself, not because I've got a massive ego or anything like that, but yeah. it was because I wanted to learn how to light things and how this actually worked. And, you know, it's, <laughs> and I tell you, I mean, you know, I've used my kids and my wife as stand-in models in the past, but their <laughs> patience will only go so far. You know, <laughs> yes, and uh, you know, and now it's like it's literally. I mean, my youngest daughter is actually really funny. Whenever you know, if I can get her to sit in for me when I'm setting something up, you know, let's say I have a client coming in a couple of hours and I'm setting, I'm setting some lights up, and I just say to her, "Hey, just sit there on this on the stool for a minute, just until I've set up the lights, you know, just so I can take some test shots." 
And she literally, she's so used to it. She will like be on her iPad or something and just go, pling, back to the iPad, <laughs> pling, back to the iPad. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, yeah. when you're experimenting, when you're just playing with us and when you're learning, it's, it's never been easier to take a portrait of yourself than it is today. You, we can use apps now, like every oh. main, every major camera manufacturer has their own, their own app. You can actually via live view, look at yourself, make sure you're in shot, you know, and then click a button and, you know, and take a photo and then it'll get but transported straight onto your transported, transferred straight onto your phone. So you can actually review it straight away. So you can learn so much by doing that. It costs you nothing. It's not like you have to pay for film or anything. You know, oh, and um, you, you can do that till the end of time until you've nailed something. You just, oh, you hit on another um, tangent here, cost. Um, it's not a cheap hobby, is it? And um, I I love working with models. And I have this is my next statement about models and musicians. I love working with musicians. I love working with models. And I think they worked very hard at getting where they are at this point. I don't pay them for the moment. I pay them for their past skills. Oh, I'm missing the right. I'm for their talents over the years. I'm paying for all of the time they spent to get where they are today, sitting in my studio, you know, the, the musicians. Yeah. I often find that, um, this is my point. I'm trying to make a point here is that I find some photographers are cheap and don't pay their musicians enough and don't pay their models enough. And so I'm here today to say, pay your models and your musicians well. They've worked hard to get where they are today. And you're going to go around, you're going to, hey, pay them well. They're going to be happy. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. yeah. And they you want them to be on the spot, ready to go. You want them to be happy. We both know a happy model or happy musician is a much better one. And um uh, and I'm gonna turn around and use their photographs and make myself, you know, uh, you know, look at Russ, he's a good photographer. Um, but uh, sometimes it is the musician or the model um that can make or break you. Did you know that this podcast was brought to you by the Musicians and Models Association of the World? <laughs> we, we definitely <laughs> went down this musician path. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make that point about um, paying people well. And 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 I have heard uh, not all he's going to get. There's more. Oh, I'll give you some. I'll give you some images that you can use in exchange for this modeling opportunity. Blah. Okay, now. Kristen, if you tell me that, you know, Russ, I just trade people photographs and I never pay them, <laughs> don't tell me that. <laughs> but if it's true, just keep on going. Um, I, I just, I am fortunate enough. Hey, I am a, I'm a full-time employee at Adobe Systems and I have resources ha available to me that others don't have. My wife has to remind me of this. You know, Russ, you can fly off to these places. You can go do these things. You can pay these models. Um, you have the resources to do that. Uh, not everybody has those resources. So I also come back and say that if you are fortunate enough to have the resources that I have, then pay your models and um, musicians well. Is that Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. 100%. You know, and again, we can yet again draw a parallel to music. Oh, okay. the oh, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. parallel. As as always, you know, the amount of times that when I, when I used to work as a musician, the amount of times um, I used to hear the words like, oh, you know, come to my party. Do you want to come to my party? And I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks very much. Oh, yeah, make sure you bring your guitar. And you go like, well, okay, no. what? do you want me to come to your party? Or do you want me to entertain? Because if you want me to entertain, there's a price on that. Um, and the reason why there's a price is that it's not because I'm, uh, I'm uh, you know, I'm not a nice guy or I want to, you know, uh, no. that's got nothing to do with it. The reason why I'm surprised on that is because, you know, I've got to pay my rent and I've got to pay my bills and I've got to make sure that, you know, I keep my, my kids in Netflix. That's, yeah. you know, that is, that's, that's how I make a living. So, you know, 
the next time I have a lawyer friend, I'm going to say like, hey, come over to my house, have a few drinks. Oh, by the way, I'm going to talk to you about this, uh, you know, legal case. Oh, God. Do you know what I mean? No. I mean, it's, it's not, that's, that's not a thing. So um, you, ca you cannot pay somebody with exposure in the same way that you can't say to yeah. somebody, you know, I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give you some free photos. Well, that's going to make, it's going to make no difference to, to no. most people. But you know, the artists I work with in um, Las Vegas, the performers, they know they, they're living. I know they're living from paycheck to paycheck as a performer in Vegas and that, and they, they went to the gym every day for the last month. Did I go to the gym? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I like to pay them for their value. Um, and Absolutely. Is... You know, and there's, there's always some kind of agreement that, that, you know, you can come to. I, I think it's important because the, the reality is if you're, you know, if, if you don't pay a model, that model is not going to stay a model for very long because they, will you know, it's the same with a musician. Like ultimately I can't go out and play gigs for free because what that would mean is I would have to get another job and then I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to practice yeah. as much and I wouldn't have as much time to play gigs. And so it's, it's counterproductive, you right. know, and, uh, and the same thing is true in, in any creative industry, actually, you know, across the board. Um, um, uh, Kirsten, how long were uh, I'm, uh, you can cut this out. Beep, cut, beep, beep, cut here. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long were you going to shoot or uh, run today? Um, it, it's completely up to you. Oh, it's up to me. <laughs> it's completely up to you. I'm good. Cause I've, I have to run on and do, um, this is one of the final days of, uh, at Adobe before they go on this big holiday break that's coming up. And so I have to go back and check in on some meetings. Sure. And um, you can cut this out. Um, so um, maybe I can come up with um, uh, some closing profound thing, or you have some closing question for me. Have we hit all the topics? Have I hit all oh, I'll tell the you topics? I'll tell you what we can do. Is we, can, we can finish it off with just a little yeah. uh, sort of prognosis of, of where this whole AI thing will uh, go uh, in the future. Oh, I, do have, I do have some thoughts on where I would like okay. it to go. Okay, yeah, let me okay. let me ask you that question then. I'll ask you the question. We'll cut back in here where it's okay. what's the timestamp one twenty four. Okay, cool. So Russell, we started our conversation talking about AI and all of the things that have happened over the last year. Now, I've been wondering for some time where this is going in the future. Like, where is this whole AI thing going to take us? Um, first of all, I think just like layers. In Photoshop, um, then there came more after that. We have AI, and I think there's going to be more after that. I think there's going to be something that you and I will be amazed and go, "Where did that come from?" It's something we don't even know about yet. So we—that's what excites me about this industry because there's always something more that we haven't thought of yet. And one of these amazing engineers is going to come up with some magic and show it off and we're going to be blown away. It's going to change our lives again. There will be another time when our lives will be changed again as much as they were with layers as they are now with AI. So that's the, the one thing I know. I'm pretty sure we're going to see something even more incredible, even though we think this is incredible. But here's uh, my future thoughts uh, where I would like this to go, and I must make my statement now. I am Russell Brown from Adobe, and I work for Adobe at this time, and nothing I'm about to tell you now has been discussed with me, or I've never heard this in a um, meeting, and um, I have no idea whether anyone is even thinking about these ideas at Adobe. These are my own ideas. Okay, did I make my legal statement? <laughs> there. Um, so this is what I want to happen. I want to be able to train AI with my own library of work. And I want, that is my vision that would be really cool. I've got, you know, thousands of photographs in, uh, in Lightroom, for example. I've got library catalogs and libraries of photographs in Lightroom. And I want to direct that off and say, this is now your source, Mr. AI, and you can use all of my photos. And um, I know for a fact that if I type in um, a space cat on Mars, 
Well, I'm not going to have any space cats, okay? I, I'm not going to have any. Oh, oh, so, so, oh, my wife's in the office here. And so, um, but he is going to have all of my photographs from Death Valley, from Yosemite, um, are all going to be um, available to me from that um, set of um, images. So that is my a future vision is to see um, an AI trained and so that the photographs that come back are all mine and and originate from my images only. What do you think? What do you think? I think that would that would make a lot of Carrot Club people really happy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it would. It would. I, there were times um, when I would want to turn that on and be myself. And there are times I, want, I would like to bring others in. And here's the second half of the equation. I want to sell myself. <laughs> I want to go into retirement and say, here's, here's this unit. Here's this learning module called Russell Preston Brown. You can buy that so they can pay for my medical bills <laughs> in later in life. <laughs> and so I want a little bit of the Russell Brown a library perhaps you don't get to see it it's it's an equation it's a it's a module and you plug it in to your ai so that you can then pull from that library if you think it's a valuable library um to train um and so you can then buy other people's um resources other people's thinking other people's vision of photography then falls into your own and then um, merge that into your your workflow. Um, that would be sort of cool a, as well. Um, that would be amazing, and of course, it would it would help it would help everyone to become yeah. an even better photographer in the future. Yeah, yeah, and um, it would help. It, it, I just say it gives you the resources, like a, a stock photographer. Um, I think it's the stock photographer of the future. Is this module that you purchase um, uh, with all of your images? be pretty cool so there's my thoughts about the future um i think we probably um finish off of that um i think i enjoy it i use it now i can't live without it um and the future is going to be pretty cool there, there there's my conclusion <laughs> <laughs> fantastic russell it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show as always it w uh, would have been the last time i'm sure we'll we'll speak again let's, there's a let's whole do it again Let's do it again next at uh, the end of the year because we both know in the next week they will reinvent um, uh, something crazy new will happen between now and this time next um, uh, in December of um, next year. Will oh, something wild and crazy will have come out? Absolutely, it's it's amazing to think what the future might hold. Uh, Russell, thank you so much for being on the show. Okay, folks, that's it for today. It's always great to have Russell on the show. And as always, before we go, let me just recommend another episode that I think you like. Check out episode 163 with Troy Miller. I'm sure you love it. And if you enjoy our content, consider supporting us on buymeacoffee.com to help us continue creating and bring you more exciting episodes. It really does mean the world to us. And for those of you who are listening to the audio version of this podcast, just be reminded that there's a fully fledged, fully technicolored version over on YouTube. All you have to do is, well, go over to YouTube, type in Camera Shake, uh, where you can see all of our uh, brilliant guests' photography in full technicolor, as I mentioned. And remember, you know, do the flavor, hit that like and subscribe button. That would make our day. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I'll see you again next Thursday.